Good evening, everyone. This is John Burgos, and welcome to tonight's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. And this evening, we have a dear friend um, and just an amazing facilitator whose body of work is just, it's every time I have a session or, or Jill gets into her her mode with me, it's the information that comes through. It's I just feel this this purity of wisdom that's coming in with this benevolence of really wanting to propel who she works with forward and again how she accesses and, and the information that gets shared. I'm gonna let Jill explain to you here in a second, but it's, I'm thrilled that she's on today because there's some things that she's really tapping into. They're so important for our awareness. And part of Jill's approach is this no BS, shoot from the hip. This is exactly how I see it and what's going on. Um, and I love that. And I love it because it's direct. It's straightforward. It's applicable. We can bring it down and ground it in and do something with it and carry it forward in its truth in a whole new enlightened way. Um, and so, again, it's going to be a phenomenal call. Jill's going to be talking to us about the shifts that are happening right now, and there's lots of them. We we kind of tapped into it before the call, and I didn't want to get into too much discussion with it with Jill because I wanted to save it fresh so that all of us can participate. And she's also going to be sharing with us the Ascension Codes um, and talking about the insights from our life reviews to inspire soulful living now. And so, again, it's going to be a phenomenal call. I'm excited that all of y'all are here with us or listening on the replay um, because what has to be shared is um, exciting stuff. And with that, Jill, I want to welcome you back uh, to be on The Ordinary. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I always love our time together, and your audience is amazing. (laughs) Yes, our audience is amazing, absolutely. Absolutely. because we have a lot of people from your community showing up on these calls as well, so I want to say hi to all of y'all as well and welcome back. Um, Jill, before we get into the conversation as to the shifts, because I, I want to start there, can you let anyone, everyone in the audience know what it is your work is, what it involves, and mm. how it help, helps that you help people through through spiritual transformation or awakening or awareness, whatever you want to call it? Okay. So for the first 38 years of my life, I knew myself as a very normal um, person. (laughs) I was very successful in business, and um, I met my husband when I was 17, and he was 18. And we're still together. It's awesome. We got married in 93. And I knew myself in a very 3D but high-achieving way. And what I now see is that I... I want to say I took another assignment (laughs) that wasn't destined for me, but I said yes to it, where at the age of 38, 39, I accepted my spiritual gifts. And it allows me to come into this really, really cosmic out there wisdom that actually disagrees with a lot of the mainstream conventional teachings, even in spirituality in this reality. So I didn't come into my gifts from like trying to get them. In other words, I, I was, I'm not a self-help you know, devotee. I'm not even a spiritual <laughs> devotee in terms of like New Age books and things like that. So I, I'm, I give myself permission to disagree with doesn't make sense to me from a cosmic mm-hmm. perspective. So my angle is very different. Um, I like things to be very clear, very honest, and very rational and practical. So I find that my clients are very refreshed (laughs) by the authenticity, the bluntness, and that I can really clearly see energetically what isn't working, not just for them personally, but in this reality. So it's not just about, like I want to say, a healthy spiritual diagnosis about, about what isn't working. But the insights that I have about what works better is it blows me away. So I'm still shocked at who and what I am. <laughs> and I've already been doing this for like nine years now. Um, I surprise myself at the answers that I get, the access that I have. And I'm also still normal in a lot of ways. Um, and, a, you know, now I've created this business. And I'm a business owner. I left my, my uh, career, my business career, to do this work with my husband's support. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Um, I love to travel. I love to travel with clients and have amazing experiences. But, yeah, it's just a, <laughs> people notice that my work is very different. And I love the freedom 
and the liberation that it offers from truly outdated teachings that aren't getting us where we need to be. I shouldn't say that because it's not, it's not that we need to be anywhere, but there's so much untapped potential within the human race. And I feel like I incarnated with the opportunity to help update that. And what I find is that everyone that really hears my messages, they're built the same way. They built themselves that way in this reality. So this vibe that we naturally have with each other feels like an orchestrated dance. Oh, I love that. And I love about the potentiality because, you know, you just mentioned to me you just got back from Disneyland. And it's like going to Disneyland and stopping at the teacups because it's so much fun. And But you still have <laughs> Magic Mountain to get to, right? It's like one, one the Magic Mountain. Um, mm. And so it's... It's, and that's how we get to play in human form in different ways. And if there's um, yeah. a path that gets opened through awareness and through enlightenment, um, that's what you help provide. And you channel information as well. And I'm not sure if a lot of people yeah. are, are familiar with that. But who do you channel in? Uh, where do you receive mm. some of this information from? Mm-hmm. So when I when I first started out, I my first connection that I felt was with Mother Mary. Um, I I don't know if I could begin to describe how I knew that that's who it was. I just knew. Um, And then she connected me. She fabulous introduction that she gave me to Jesus, which many people prefer the term Yeshua. I'm okay with with the word Jesus. But later on, then I realized that my team, what I call my team, which is the connection that I am in the in the all that is, and then I'm a human manifestation that I call Jill. Right? That that team is actually. And I encourage everybody to look at your higher self this way. It's anything I need it to be based on what I'm choosing to be as my human. So the channeling part to me isn't me connecting with a dimension that's separate from me and my higher self. It is my higher self. And that's a very fluid, dynamic, limitless vibration. And some of that is like named personalities that we know from this reality. Some of the dimensional ranges that I access, they don't have names. They've never been here before. I mean, a Pleiadian council <laughs> came through um, in a set of work I did this summer. It's just, it's, I'm constantly, I want to say, surprised and impressed with the support and the love that we have from uh, the, the inner dimensions beyond this time-space continuum for us here. We matter. They care about us. They don't want us to be bumping into walls. They don't want us to be confused. They don't want us to spend countless hours of time trying to figure things out when it really doesn't matter whether our mind understands it or not. It's We make this really hard. <laughs> Humans make life hard. And that's part of our experience. And we have, again, all this facilitation that's coming through. And, and, and you as a bridge for the translation also and an interpreter as well. So thank you for that. And, and I love your description of it because that's, <laughs> it's, it's so important that all, you know, if, if we're working with you, we're listening to a call with you, we choose our interact, you know, either in a group call or one-on-one session, mm-hmm. it's just great to get the reminders um, and tap into because a lot of times that also ignites a, a memory or an awareness or like a yes, that's what I've been looking for. And so right. just little words can, can make a big difference. That's cool. I want to, just what you just said right there, John, that's so important because, and I just want to amplify it. When you were talking about you get that yes, I mean, I just invite everyone to think about where does that come from? The fact that you have some some sort of radar, some sort of metric that you're looking for in teachings and truth, et cetera, you're, you're, a sounding, you're a sounding board within yourself, within your all that is energy. So when you get a yes or a no or I'm not sure, you're comparing it against something. And I would mm-hmm. offer that what you're comparing it to is, is a soulful um, vibration that you, that you have access to in this reality. So it's not just an empty cup that, that you're trying to fill up. It's a, it's a chamber of truth that you're living in your life. Mm. Oh, I love that. A chamber of truth that we're living in a life, yeah. and we all have that. <laughs> that I have goodness, that I've, I've, Wow. I've, Goosebumps all over me. Oh, I love it. All mm-hmm. right, guys, so access your chamber of truth, and we're going to be talking here. Um, Jill, let's get into the shifts that you've been feeling happening. What is what mm. is up in your awareness around all this different energy that's been popping up? Yeah, and, you know, sometimes I hesitate to talk about, like, popular culture, but it is 
sometimes a nice parallel for what's going on on a galactic level. Uh, some don't follow the news, and I, I appreciate that that's an approach that works best for some people, and I honor that. Um, there's a major Hollywood icon that is being taken down by a, a, re, a surfacing of scandal related to sexual um, impropriety with actresses um, in Hollywood. It's Harvey Weinstein. And when this happened, I felt a crack. I felt a crack in the fabric of falseness in this world, in this 3D, 4D, 5D reality. It's like exposure in a positive way, exposure for truth, bringing things into the light, bringing things to be surfaced and processed. And for it's almost like awareness of unconscious victimization. So when that happened with the Harvey Weinstein and then now recently he was fired, I don't know why I follow this stuff or why it shows up on my radar. It's not like I'm looking for it, but when it popped up, it felt big. It felt really, really big. So when that happened, and then today as I'm just kind of feeling into, as it was playing in the background, my energy field, I was seeing, and it actually it was fun because it came up in the private session today, that <clears throat> there is a lot of shifting of roles on a galactic level. And it is showing up in this reality as well. So new assignments, reassignments, et cetera. And what's fun is that what the Galactic Council in general was pointing out for this private session client, she knows who she is, and she's going to be like, wait, that came up today. <laughs> yes, it did, and it's related <laughs> to everybody too. It's fun. Um, but there's some for some people, they're going to feel a bit of a void because they're not yet certain of how they fit into this shifting construct. But I would encourage everyone, if you're in that sense of void, it's not passive. I really encourage you to reflect on what, do you, what shifts do you want to happen in your life? Be an active participant in where these next chapters of your human journey are going so that you can feel more leadership and more authorship in your life. Um, that's actually one of the uh, uh, less desirable teachings that I come across a lot in my work um, as pervasive in this world is this idea that, that we're passive participants and that we just have to get permission or advice or insight or yes or no from our guides with everything that we do. And I'm like, why, why, what, where does this come from? What is, what's that, right? Who's living this life, your guides or you? Um, it, yeah, so taking more ownership, taking more leadership, and feeling where you want your life to go. Having that yes and that no come from within yourself, not needing to check in with authority that is supposedly higher than you. You're the authority. Your team wants you to feel like the authority in your life. So this shuffling, the shifting, these new timelines that we're adding onto this reality give us more choices. And there will be parts of our life even our human um, human relationships where we've felt stagnancy in certain relationships or certain opportunities haven't been going the way that we thought they, they would or could, and we're going to get that pause. We're going to, and I encourage people to take that pause where you can reflect and reevaluate. Is this still the direction you want to head in your life? Hmm. That's, Wow, I'm feeling into and just pausing um, so that we can all take it in because that's mm. it's really a big invitation, Jill. And and part of the invitation also, um, from what I've been feeling, requires also the shifting chaotic energy because as we mm. step into that, as things reorganize, there are some things that, you know, we want to call it chaotic and that's such a big word, but it's going to feel uncomfortable even energetically as mm. as we adjust course, because whenever there's an adjustment in that course, it's it's a little unfamiliar, and it may seem like mm -hmm. things are off. But again, but I want to go back to that part of the internal knowing that we have, mm -hmm. and following that, because mm -hmm. you know, this despite what our history, our our personal past history would tell us, or the belief systems that others have around us our own guidance is really leading us somewhere that, that's totally different than we've ever been before. And I love if you can talk a little bit more about that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this yes and no um, sort of vibration that we can feel sometimes automatically and sometimes not. Sometimes we feel kind of neutral. And what's interesting is that some people feel like they're missing a yes or a no by the neutrality that they may feel. Mm. And I love to remind people that with my team and my interaction and my in my humanness as Jill, if I were to ask my team, like, where should I go on my next family vacation with my family, there would be silence because they're asking me what I want to do <laughs> for my next family vacation with my family. Um, so sometimes we we have an expectation that isn't um, accurate for how this divine energy actually works. And more importantly, John, how much leadership we're being encouraged to take on in our human lives. We, uh, hmm, let's see, let me take my time on this one. This feels important. My team is like, slow down, this is big. <laughs> okay. So with with these shifts, with with these kind of galactic council level reassignments, and, and these are reassignments that we've signed up for, by the way. It literally is us as our higher self signing up for new experiences, volunteering for things, um, even initiating new new programs, new projects, new, ex- I want to say experiments, but I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean it in an exploratory, pioneering sort of way. We're constantly sort of jiggering with this system, and we each have a human in this in this experience that we can, I want to say, play that out through. So it's a wonderful assignment that we each have by being human right now. We we made these human experiences, each of us did our own, for changing the nature of reality here. So it's to me it almost this is an exaggeration, but it almost feels tragic that then we get into this experience and for so many good reasons we don't trust ourselves and then it's like we forget the whole opportunity that we were here to guide shape create and steer energy in this world but that's why we're here that's what got us here as as our higher self to begin with so as you can imagine i don't believe earth is a school i don't know earth in that way but I know that we're powerful enough to pretend it's that way. And just as we're powerful enough to pretend like we're students, we're powerful enough to act like the masters that we are. And that's Mm -hmm. where the experience here really changes. Because then you look at something like the scandal in Hollywood, (laughs) and and some of you may be curious why it matters. Because when the big players are exposed for their inauthenticity, and their lies, and their deception, and their misdeeds, that's a win for truth, honesty, decency, love, and basic human respect. Yeah, it sure is. And and it's so beautiful also because everything that we do for our personal enlightenment really acts as an enlightenment for the collective. It just does. Mm. <sighs> it just does. It just does. And... Um, Our team, my team, your team, all of our teams are asking me to also go into this idea about opposing forces. Um, It's easy to get confused about the the lack of light in this reality. Um, And it's, you know, a lot of, I feel like the most common truth in this community here is that we know that everything is love. We're, We're convinced of that. And yet we have a hard time in our human brains explaining how there's so much negativity and, and just you know unconscious <laughs> actions and horrible things that happen in this world. So the, 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 it isn't darkness as an opposing force to light. It's just lack of light. So if, you're in a, if you walk into a room and it's dark, there's not a force creating darkness. There's a lack of light in that room. And it's, I feel like it's helpful for a lot of layers of our human, our human consciousness to hear that so that we feel more confident in the light of Source Creator God that we're bringing here to this reality. We sell ourselves so short, John. It just, it's, it's really, it's like unfortunate and just this huge exciting opportunity that I feel because all of us, if we would just trust ourselves even a little bit more, we would walk into those dark rooms beaming with confidence of the love of God that we are. 
it's mm. it's fascinating to me how often I talk to people and they're you know talking about you know some person that um Anyway, just examples of somebody that maybe wasn't as authentic in their light or, you know, made a poor choice or did something that they wouldn't do. And they're like, but do I do that? And in a, in a private session, I'm like, no, you, you never do that. You would never do that. But it's like we question ourselves so much because we're here. We don't give ourselves credit enough for how beautifully we wired ourselves how naturally loving, naturally caring, naturally inspiring we often are, even when we're not even trying. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, it's, and you and I, I mean, we talk about it even after our calls, you can feel the light beaming and, and mm. the energy beaming from people on the calls, on these calls, mm. the writing in and, and participating and um, sharing and and. In their wisdom, energetically, it's what's being shared and inspiring us to talk, but it's, it's wonderful to feel it coming through to people. Now, Jill, it's, and again, we sell ourselves short, and, and you said that before, but it's really a thing that we've been taught to sell ourselves short. We've been mm. over and over ingrained a, into that belief system. And we can talk about it, you and I, and so we're blue in the face, but what mm. will it take for others to start receiving and relaxing into the truth of the potentiality that exists within them in that awakening process? Because mm. there's a lot of people that write, I'm, I'm struggling, I don't want to be human anymore, I'm tired of this mm-hmm. existence, um, I'm tired of everything that I see out there, I don't, I don't find love, I can't find money, you know, all the things mm-hmm. that come up and, and different versions of the suffering that, that many experience. Mhm. Ah, okay. Let's do a let's do a group reading, John. <laughs> okay. <Awesome. laughs> okay. I'm gonna be quiet for a minute while I go deeper within myself to uh to see what's see what's coming up here regarding this. If you could see yourself from our angle, you'd be standing very tall. You'd be feeling very confident. You would see the love that you are in this reality, and you would see more clearly how special, how unique, how powerful that is in this world. So it isn't about denying any uncomfortable or unpleasant experiences that you've had in this world, but it's helping you see how different you are from this world. So yes, you are, you are fully human, and you brought with you very special technology and special energy that allows you to feel and be and express the love of Source Creator God that is very unnatural and not nor- not the norm within the human race. We share this with you so that you can own that your special nature, own your true divinity. It's okay that others in this reality can't see you. This reality is very fragmented and highly unconscious. So asking that to see you is asking too much. A better approach is for you to see you. You to trust your pure intentions, your good intentions for people you've never, ever even met. You want good things for everybody. You see that? Yeah, we see you. And it is powerful. And you've already changed lives, even without possibly intending to do so, just by your being you. How fabulous is that? That you, in your natural, organic way of being you, have changed people's lives. So, of course, it makes us wonder what it could be like if you were even more aware of the pioneering nature you are in your humanness regardless of who sees you or who doesn't see you, regardless of how many allow you to assist them in changing their lives, in upgrading their potential in this world. So let's help you focus on your light. And I do invite you to imagine that within your heart space, that little flicker that you may imagine in there, we've heard it called the little pilot light. 
Mm-hmm. It's a bonfire. It's a huge bonfire that lights up cities, that lights up territories, that lights up states, that lights up the planet individually. Gaia feels your love, and she's bigger than you. <laughs> your love is palpable. So yes, are there challenges in your life? Of course there are. This is this is Earth. It was built for forgetting that we're God, and here you are remembering that you're God. So that's you're you are a salmon going upstream. So there are a series of expectations that your brain may hold about what that would look like if you're a master. And your brain may tell you things like, well, if you're a master, then you won't have any financial troubles. If you're really a master, then you wouldn't have this going wrong in your life. And we just want to remind you about a sibling pioneer named Jesus, whose life was not perfect, whose life was filled with opportunity, and he took them. He also made opportunities. He made light in himself wherever he went, and a lot of people felt it. And a lot of people didn't. Most of this reality while he was here could not and would not see him. It didn't end well for him. He doesn't blame this world for that. He acknowledges that in in its fragmented state, this world can only do so much. And that's why he was here. And that's why we're here. Because the raw potential of the human race is still and always will be absolutely interstellar amazing. And we love that so much that we created a human, each of us, to be to be loving, to be caring, to be compassionate, and to watch out for your fellow humans that are like toddlers running with scissors. <laughs> Be safe, be wise, be light, be loving, and trust who and what you are, even when this world can't see you, even when this world can't show up the way you'd want it to. We trust you. Hmm. Oh. John. Oh, it's beautiful. I feel that on so many levels. I just I see like little uh little trap doors kind of being created where they weren't there before. Um as I'm looking around energetically at all of us here on this call and even in the archives, and I know that hasn't happened yet, but <laughs> this is how we work, right? Beyond the time space continuum. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I see created pathways that we are each contemplating on a, on a super conscious level with personal challenges in our lives that, you know, I haven't thought about it this way. I wonder if I tried it that way. Getting creative, creating, making things happen, um, not, not being overly passive and feeling more authority and personal responsibility for our current situation so that we can adjust and not look at any pain or suffering as anything you deserve, because no one deserves pain or suffering. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, what did you feel? Wow. What did you feel, brother? <laughs> well, I, I felt the truth of what was being shared, and, and it brought us to it brought me to conversations that you and I have had um, that illuminates mm-hmm. more of the remembrance, because it really it's inviting us to remember. So it's a couple of things. One invitation that came out that. It reminded me of, and it's just that from that point of intentionality that was brought in, from that natural, organic way that we are being individually as ourselves, Mm. that from that foundation of the intention, because it's built on love, it's so solid, that foundation is love, guys. You guys are holding that. And from that, there really are no wrong choices. There's there's choices to experience, but there's not choices that are made in density. There's not choices that are made 
in that counter energy that you were talking about earlier because it's all really a collaborative energy when you're functioning from that intentionality. It's co-creative. It's not built in lack or insufficiency or I've got to get something from something else in order to thrive or make myself feel better. It's from the natural state of being of love, of wanting to collaborate with others, of wanting to mm-hmm. experience um, based on our all soul growth, but with the invitation for even if it's subconscious or super conscious um, with the whatever agreements we've made with other people to create those realities, but it's still part of our discovery of ourselves. And in that we get to build upon the potentiality of a different paradigm that we've been than what we've been used to. Does that make sense? I hear you. So if if I can phrase it back to see if I understood, I don't know if I got all of it, but let me get it <laughs> because it's good. <laughs> I love what you just said right there. The pioneering spirit is there and we are creating new paradigms. So it's like there's this constant shift. Is that what I was that part of what you were talking about too? There's like these constant states of shifting where parts of us can really never feel comfortable and that may be frustrating to some people or maybe um, disconcerting to some people, but that's the nature of how we're very dynamic here, far more dynamic than we give ourselves credit. Does that does that resonate with what you were saying? It, it's definitely. We're far more dynamic and far more well-intentioned and powerful in the intentionality mm-hmm. than we yeah. give ourselves credit for. And what happens is mm-hmm. that sometimes we hesitate because we're not sure about where things are. We're scared that we're going to make a wrong choice. We get stuck stuck yeah. in, 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 in not taking that leadership role that we know that we inherently have within us, but we've been so conditioned. It's like a PTSD response from the old education that we grew up with that yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. we don't have enough confidence or and I don't even call it confidence. We don't have enough momentum into that leadership role to, to keep mm-hmm. making the decisions that we know are, <clears throat> that they're just not wrong from that foundation. <clears throat> There's no wrong choices yeah. once you get to that level. I totally agree. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's like uh it's like when if you're in the kitchen and you trust yourself and to enough to know that certain flavors will just go well together and you're confident enough in a dish that you're willing to experiment with it, that's how our higher selves look at us. So we're like, I don't know, should I add the carrots to the salad? I don't normally put carrots in the salad. <laughs> it's just like, right. just throw the carrots in. Just give just it a try. It, if you don't like it, then just do it differently later. It's okay. Um, yeah, that, I don't want to say paranoia, is because it's not, I don't feel like it's a paranoid state, but that, that hesitation, that insecurity, that lack of confidence. In other words, the fear of getting it wrong. Um, and I talk a lot about that in the the Ascension Codes, which I know we'll talk about, but it's just so fresh in my head because I just did it yesterday. But that is definitely addressed because this lack of confidence, um, what it's doing, John, is that the biggest, I want to say regret that we often have at our life review after our journeys are over, is that we wish we would have been bolder. We wish we would have trusted ourselves more. So whenever that comes through in my work, I find that the the person that's receiving it is like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because they see where they're holding themselves back. They see where they wish they could have the confidence. They wish they could even have permission. Some of us really wish it was just like school, like, you know, can I get the hall pass to go you know, to, <laughs> to visit right. another classroom or go to the library? We just wish there was some authority to hand us the permission card to say, yeah, you can go do that. But that's not earth, and that's not what we're here for. There isn't a set plan. There isn't – but like you said, the the good side, the upside is – we can't get it wrong. Mm-hmm. And when you yeah. when you live like you can't get it wrong, things get fun. We get creative. We get really bold. We get very courageous in a good way, and we start to we start to stir stuff up in a really like and it makes our higher selves really excited because we start to go off script. We start to create new lanes of of avenues of pursuit for being ourselves. It's wonderful. Yeah, we're we're kids in the in the sandbox, except without the box. Yes, 
Right, no box needed. Endless no, no sand. Needed. <laughs> <laughs> Endless sand and constant creation, which is wonderful. Now, Jill, why do you find that most people pull back that that nature of hesitancy? There's a lot of reasons. Um, obviously, a basic one is fear of failure. They don't want to disappoint themselves, and they don't want to disappoint others. I think in a group like this, it's more common that we're concerned about disappointing others or letting others down or misleading others. That's a big one. Um, A lot of us are more okay with letting ourselves down, but we're not okay with letting other people down. Isn't that interesting, right? right? That's quite a code of ethics if you think about it. Um, Another one is, is the fear of getting it wrong. Um, A huge one that's really prevalent is... Um, fear that they're not ready. So they know what the bold step is that they want to make, but they're not convinced that they're ready yet. And (laughs) this is my favorite one, because I I have a really strong human brain, um, and I love to create patterns of harmony (laughs) with my human brain, as as I've done such a major transformation in my life. So I get that, I get it, that brain pattern of, well, how, you know, who do you think you are? You know, you're not ready for this. What are you doing, right? And I'm like, no, I know, brain, I know you see that we're not ready, but I really think I was born with this option of doing this, so I'm just going to go do it. And I get that you're terrified, and I get that you, you're worried about public humiliation or public failure, but I have to do this. I'm more afraid of not doing it than I am of doing it. So... I get that you have questions, brain. I get that you have concerns, brain, but here we go. And I've learned to work that way with my brain, and I'm so happy I did, John, because if I didn't, I wouldn't have been able to meet so many amazing people in in a community like this. I mean, I would still be this, wow, it's just hard to even recall what I was like eight years ago. And I like that, Jill, but... I really like my chill now. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's a deeper connection to that gel and to yeah. that creative expression that, that's that's been wanting relationship with you. So letting letting that that big bold image of you be your motivation and not waiting for your brain to say, Okay, now you're ready. Because I can guarantee you, the human brain will never say, you're ready for that big, bold move. It never will. So we've been using our human brain as sort of an internal gatekeeper. And it's it, our human brain is such a horrible um, gatekeeper in that way because it's built to keep us safe and in many ways to analyze the status quo and defend the status quo and proven track record. It's got a rearview mirror kind of thing. So it's not the best visionary, but our soulfulness is. And it gets tiring and exhausting. So when you were mentioning earlier about some people just saying, you know what, I'm, I, can I just be done? This is too hard. I, I don't know. I feel like the game is rigged. It's not even fair, <laughs> right? Um, there's a part of your soulfulness that knows that you pre-wired yourself in a whole bunch of ways to be very savvy, maybe even sneaky and tricky to counteract the rigged nature of this reality. So we're like ninjas, but we don't see ourselves as ninjas because our human brains are constantly trying to kind of pull us back and put the brakes on. So when we can get more confident in trying something new in a construct where we control some of the variables to help minimize risk if that's our if that's our nature that's fine right do do something <laughs> to get the ball rolling though and what i find is that the excitement tends to build and then the human brain realizes that it can't stop you and it's not going to stop you and then the growth really accelerates but do you know how many people are on this call tonight that really would love to provide a healing service or do intuitive readings. They think they're intuitive, but they're not quite sure. And there's so Mm -hmm. many people just right on that edge of a huge, bold move. Right, I agree. And all I want to say is, like, go for it, just do it. I did practice readings for 10 months just because I wanted to really, like, is this really something I can do? Okay, that was good. Okay, yeah. And honing my skill, figuring it out. Um, There's, I mean... 
but my brain would have said, you can't do that. And I'm like, I know, let's just practice. Let's just practice for 10 months on anyone that will let us do a reading. Right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love how that came up. And also, and what I feel in Purdue Energy, and I think it's important to bring up also, is that mm. a, I know a lot of people also try to make it their main source of income from the very beginning. And oh. it's, and, and, and that can, that, that's the brain convoluting it. And when you mix the energies with the, I've got to support myself doing this in this way, um, it, it doesn't come across as facilitated as, as it might can. I'm not saying that it's across the board for everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I find when I run the shows of if, whenever I've tried to bring a speaker on just because they might be a financial boom, and by the way, it's only happened twice in the very beginning. It was a, it was a horrible failure. Mm-hmm. Um, in so many ways, I didn't resonate mm-hmm. with the call. The audience didn't reply, didn't respond well. Um, it just felt okay, and, and I felt empty inside. It's like, no, that's not really the direction. And I was shown early on, and, and so we don't repeat that. So we really have to look at our intentionality and why we're doing things. What's the purpose in it? What's it filling yeah. within us other than a need based on primary biological responses, if you will. Right. That's, you know, <laughs> this brings up a funny funny conversation. I'm curious about your response to it. I'm ready to – remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? It's a pyramid, and everybody needs oh, like, yeah. food, shelter, and clothing before they can move forward. I'm ready to just do, like, a, a bomb on that thing because it's, it's wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. It is. I agree. I agree. It's absolutely just so outdated, so antiquated, and it makes spiritual enlightenment like a linear thing, right? And that's just, I mean, think about it. The idea that somebody that's hungry or homeless, that they can't have a spiritual connection, that's basically, I mean, that's an extreme uh, takeaway from Maslow's hierarchy needs, and my apologies to Maslow because I feel like he's right here, and I know he's, I know he's not here anymore, but he's here, here next to me. He's like, no, I get it. It, it, it has its benefits and it has its weaknesses. You're pointing out its weaknesses. Thanks a lot, Jill. Um, it, that just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's wrong, and it's really got us distracted. Because a lot of us feel like in order for humanity to move forward, we have to have have all these other things covered. And here's the operative word, first. And it doesn't have to be first. Spiritual connection is a natural state. It's it's a nonlinear event. So the idea that, well, first I have to fix this, and then I have to fix that, and we do a different version of it in this community. We feel like, well, we have to get rid of all these negative aspects of ourselves, all these flaws. Um, you know, we have to clear incessantly before we can really feel the light of God within ourselves. And I'm just like, we really make it so hard because if we, it's not a stack of books stacked on top of each other where the light, the light version of you is on the bottom and all these other kind of quirky versions of ourselves are on the top. It's flip the books on its side. They're all standing upright on a bookshelf, and they're all right there. So that brilliant, light-based, loving, spectacular, glorious you <laughs> is sitting right next to and equally accessible to all the other versions of you. Grumpy you, sad you, <laughs> <laughs> inspiring right. you, coaching you. They're all right next to each other. So this, it's just, it. there's just these, they're like little tricks, right, to kind of flip it in your, literally in the human brain, in the mind, about how it looks at how things function that were wrong and now can be right, and it makes things ever, it makes everything easier and more graceful, and we allow more of that flow. And again, it's about allowing for that flow. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But because because those other things make us seek permission, and the truth is, we don't need permission to be in the flow, guys. We don't need a formula. Yay! And we, if there were a formula, this group, we'd come here to bust it open anyway, like I just did with the Maslow's <laughs> hierarchy of needs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the formula. Just, I'm going to do it my own way. <laughs> right, totally. It's like, oh, you made a formula good. I can create a new one. Thank you very much. And that's just I'll do my own. You guys, are, you guys are rebels. You guys are always trying totally to are. create a better way of doing things 
or mm. a, a, a new playful way of doing things that brings in illuminates more and more and more. And we're constantly doing yes. that. That's that's what we're here constantly. to do. It's never going to end. And your example of that is so perfect, John. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna shine I'm gonna shine you <laughs> shine on you a little bit because I know you, we all love you, John. <laughs> this, this, your your conversation about a speaker that you know well this one is really big and let's have that person on, and then you're like this is a flop. I can't do it this way. I want to do people that I want to have on. That mm. I mean that's you and your authenticity, and we feel that, brother. We feel that in you. Yeah, well, and again, I couldn't show up any other way because it's, for me, it's just, it, 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 it feels so it's heavy. So perfect, so, right? And that's and that's what this audience. I mean, that's just God. If you're looking for guideposts, mm-hmm. guys, if you're not sure where to head, you're not sure what to do next. What feels good? And Jill, what would you suggest to people who who don't have a clue what to do next? What if they just <laughs> know, like yeah. they they feel stuck? <laughs> but we don't. Well, I don't know. It's like. I'm not I know. being called to do healing. I'm not being called to do anything. Yeah. My job is okay, but I feel kind of empty. It's like, how do, how do people get inspired in the, in the muteness of what's happening in the world to, to, to invite something different in? It's overwhelming, right? I mean, this this reality can easily be overwhelming. And as you're describing that person that that is at a state of of lack of inspiration, really, they're just uninspired. It's it's mm-hmm. literally. I just have this image of this this beautiful man or woman just like laying on the floor of their room, just like I'm just done. Like stick a fork in it. I'm just done, <laughs> right? <laughs> and what I want to do is I want to lay right next to you, like like my dog would lay next to me, and just like cuddle with you, and just like give you a big hug and say but you're warm your your heart's still beating and that tells me that your higher self is still really committed to you being here so have your moment laying on the ground as, as long as you need to and then force a smile on your face hum a song that you like i mean come up with any trick that you can to just get your ass off the floor and stand up <laughs> and go stand in the sun and the next time the sun is rising wherever you are and let yourself rejuvenate because you're tired you're drained for various reasons and it's so understandable but please don't stay there too long in a drained state and if what you've been trying to do to motivate yourself isn't working then try something else right i mean your your life matters enough that you made you so if there's a part of your brain saying but no, you don't understand, Jill. I'm I'm really not supposed to be here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a story. That's not true. <laughs> oh. It's just not true. So there there could be some, and there probably is, some twisted, distorted views of self and maybe even this reality that are suppressing the natural inspired state that is within that person. So that's yeah, a different that. that's a different challenge, right? Because the inspired state, like remember we were talking about the books on the bookcase, it's there, but they're not they're not pulling that one off the shelf. So and then they're not sure how, right? So I get in funks too, you guys. I get in a state where I'm just like, I just wanna can I just lay in bed today? And then on those days I'll look at my calendar like, Okay, what do I have to do today? Okay, I have to eat. I may have to, you know, take care of the girls and the family in some way. I may have work I need to do. Um, and, it, and this is going to be funny in a second here. At least I'm about to laugh. <laughs> I will do what I have to do, and then in my free time, I'll, like, watch documentaries or do something that just is uninspired but entertaining to me, right? What's funny is that if on that day of my supposed funk, right, just feeling out of sorts, not myself, not very inspired, not very glowy. I love it if on my calendar I have client work because like what we were talking about before, we show up for other people. Mm-hmm. So it's always funny to me how I can be like, I don't know. If in, in those rare times that I have those days, if I have client work, I'm back to that book. I'm back to that book of my expanded self, here to help them, here to be my best self on behalf of somebody else. But it's funny how if that's not on my calendar, I'll just I'll just stay laying on the floor. <laughs> right. That, so yeah, it, that's interesting. It's it's proof that that, that divine you <laughs> expression of yourself is available 
and that it's just for whatever reason you need a circumstance to pull it out of you. <laughs> you need a reason to pull it out of you in that moment. And some people that are more isolated in their lives, they could be more likely to stay in that funk longer. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, something as, mm-hmm. as, as easy as going out and walking in the sun or the rain. Enjoy the yeah. rain also. It's just mm-hmm. as beautiful. It can mm-hmm. inspire you as well. And just whatever spark that gives you, if you go to the coffee shop and you a gleam in your eye mm-hmm. can spark someone else and it's just that chemistry, just it starts adding up. But yeah. I find that when those funks come up, even if we try to do something a little bit different, like you said, no matter what it mm-hmm. is, it mm-hmm. awakens up um, yeah. a, a potential, awakens up a, an opportunity uh, yeah. that wants to spark something within your heart and your enthusiasm. And then I feel like there's a deeper layer to this, right, where it's not just like a superficial funk of just like a, a ebb in your energy flow in like a, you know, a five-month window and you just have a little ebb, a little, a little dip. Systemically, in the human experience, a group like this is, can be frustrated by untapped potential. It's like we feel like we're sitting on a gold mine and we don't know how to get it. Yeah. And we've tried all these different things. We're told we have to work on this and work on that. Like I said, remember that book, Kate, that stack of books, and the, the gold is at the bottom, and there's all this other heavy rock between you and it. So flip, that, flip those books, people. <laughs> the gold mine is not at the center of the earth. It's not underneath a lot of crusty layers. It's right there ready for you to mine and to tap into and to be inspired from and be inspired by you know you have moments where you sparkle and shine. They've always been available to you. But in our, in our human consciousness, we make it harder than we need it to be. We have all these false illusions that, that because we're this exceptional, supposedly supernatural, masterful person, that there's gatekeepers that we put in our lives, like our family members, like, well, if I was really that amazing, my family would think I was amazing, and they don't think I'm amazing, right? <laughs> okay, so your family can't see you. Uh, there were people that couldn't see Jesus either, so that makes that gives me comfort. Our families often can't see us in a cosmic galactic way because they've only known us in our human ways. So rather than try to do a happy dance in front of them to get them to see you sparkle, don't ask them to see anything other than what they see. Uh Be sparkly and shiny for your own benefit and create avenues for you to, I want to say, mine that gold. And like I said, with, with me, I mean, I did practice readings for 10 months. Nobody told me to, right? I just love doing it. So when you said follow what you love, I loved the feeling of helping people. Right. And that tends to be a hallmark across a group like this. We just love to help people. But some people are like, well, the world isn't asking me to help them. I don't. I guess I'm unemployed. I don't know what to do, right? Nobody, <laughs> they, you know, we're just, you know, underappreciated, under, undervalued, et cetera. So then create a space where you're, I mean, make a situation where you are, offering yourself in this more galactic, supernatural way. With social media, with tech the way it is right now, that should be easier, but still we're still good at talking ourselves out of taking any steps. So when you were mentioning earlier about somebody that says, I don't know where to start, my response is, I don't know where you should start either. What do you want to try first? Mm. It changes the energy because the brain is the natural problem solver. So the brain asks trick questions like what should we do with an implication that there's one thing and if you get it wrong, you're screwed, <laughs> right? Right. No, so when, when we change it to what do you want to try first with a smile on your face and even fake excitement, it changes your energy into a creative, imaginative, visionary mode. But then your brain will still let, if you let your brain talk you out of it, I guarantee you it will. I guarantee your brain will say, well, that was a good idea last night, but back to reality. We're never doing well, that. And this, this actually takes me back to the beginning of the call, Jill, and, and, it's, and it's so important also. It's the call for leadership also. And now, again, we are, we have been, we are, 
how can I put this in, in the in the way that it will um, not limit it? There's an opportunity for us to take full license in our creation. So but we've been so used to receiving answers from outside of ourselves that we keep mm. looking for answers and asking outside. And again, I had the message from my guides when I was in Shasta. I was laying in this tub and it's like, okay, show me what you want me to do next. And they're like, we don't know. What do you want to do? Yes. And it kept yes. going, you know, and they kept, and they kept bringing it back to me. It's like, we don't know. What do you want to do? And it's, it's like, basically, you, you've got a clean slate. You, you, they, you've been written a blank check. Go create yeah. with your guides. They're no longer going to feed it to you. They want to co-create with you. They want to collaborate with you. Um, mm. but, but they want you to take the lead. Yeah. Because it's time. That's right. Oh, so well said. Yes, yes, yes. And I love, I love the theme that that you are bringing up about the authority and you know all of that. Um, I'm just looking because I know I wrote something on this a while back. Let me just look and see if this is relevant. Yeah, look at that. And while you do that, Jill, I, I want to remind you hey, yep. guys, we're, we're going to get to the special offer in a second. Um, just to let you know, but there's an opportunity, there's an amazing course that Jill's going to share, and there's also an opportunity to work with, with Jill one-on-one -on -one in private sessions. So you guys may want to take advantage of that, and again, we'll go through that in a second. Uh, and we're going to talk about ascension codes to Jill, which we have to. Um, but what, do you, what did you find in authority? Did it pull up? Uh, it's not what I was thinking of, but I feel like I got here for a reason. Are you okay if I just read it? Absolutely. Okay. What would you do if you were going about your life and through a not-so-dramatic series of events, you unlocked a pathway to additional dimensions, knowing things you couldn't possibly know, understand things you had never even thought to ask, having a profound and compelling view of this world and cosmology, divinity, and God that even pastors, priests, historians, wise beings do not have. This is my life. I took a leap of faith, you guys. I stopped reading right there. I took a leap of faith in myself and in this world. It did take a profound amount of trust, not in me, in God. If you don't trust yourself, then at least trust Source Creator. That you will have a net to catch you no matter what you do. And I encourage you to relax your ideas about what that's going to look like. Because you may be pleasantly surprised or you may be discouraged. But either way, you will have leaped and changed the definition of who and what you are in this reality. Because again, remember what we talked about with that life review. The most common response at the life review is, I wish I would have been bolder. I wish I would have remembered that I cannot fail, especially with all this amazing love-based wiring. And I was the one who was worried about moving forward and all these, all these other people that don't have good intentions, they just willy-nilly going out trying new things and I was the one that was hesitant to try new things. So... How confusing is that, right? <laughs> you are trustworthy. You really are. It, it's almost like it matters less what you do, but do something that's, that's scary <laughs> and terrifying to you about stepping out of your lane. Cre it creates new boundaries for yourself. Whomever you are looking for to authorize you or certify you, Hmm. That's a logical approach to take in this world, but it's a less successful approach to take in this world. Because anyone here that could certify you in something is certifying you in something that they already have expertise in. Mm -hmm. And that gold mine that you're sitting on is something that has never been here before. So your brain wants to get certified. Your brain wants approval. Your brain wants a guarantee. But in your living this unprecedented pioneering version of light, there are no guarantees. So let's be honest with ourselves about that. 
There are no guarantees of success. There's no guarantees of making a living at some of these things. But there's a guarantee that you will have lived more boldly, relying more fully on the light of source that you are. And I know from my experience that feels amazing. From that very first reading I did, I felt lit up in ways that I didn't know I had lights <laughs> lights to light up. And I had been I had already had so many, you know, good successes in business and so forth, but I was like, this is different. This is so different. I I feel more alive. I feel like like that was terrifying, but like I just I just did a reading for somebody. What the heck? I didn't even know I could do that, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, these are just silly little examples, but but I I want to like help uncover all those little barriers of, well, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of that. I can't do it because of this. Because our brains are just really good at coming up with roadblocks. Absolutely. Mm. And and your your little examples are actually big. Um, oh, because they're all things that we hold within ourselves. Absolutely. It's, it's so relatable and they're, they're mountains until we mm-hmm. try to move them and then we realize that they weren't as big as we had ever anticipated. Uh, but the thing is, it's walking up to it and going, okay, I'm going to do something different. So, no, this makes so much sense. Um, Jill, let's get into uh, Ascension Codes and the special offer because that's, I, I want to make sure that people have the opportunity to go into um, this awareness that you're sharing through your work and also for anybody who's interested in t- going deeper and um, being facilitated by you. Again, the opportunity for the private okay. session is on the special offer as well. So everybody on the line, yeah. uh, everybody that's listening, click on the special offer button on the webcast page. Uh, you can also get to this page by going to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Jill and then number 14, Jill 14, take you to that same page. And Jill, before we get into Ascension Codes, I want I actually want to read, a, it's one of my favorite quotes in the world, and it, and it, it talks exactly about what you say, it, and it's so poetic. It's, so it's from Terrence McKenna, if you know who that is. And he says, nature loves courage. You make the commitment, and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Mm-hmm. Dream the impossible dream. And the world will not grind will not grind you under, it will lift you up. And this is the trick. This is where all these teachers and philosophers who really counted, who really touched the alchemical gold, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done, by hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed. Brilliant. Right, and that's amazing. I love that quote, and and oh, so good. inspirational, and it's so true. Yeah. It's from so my true. experience. Yes, it's a great description. Yeah, from my experience as well. I love it. I want that to be everyone here's experience, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jill. Mm-hmm. Ascension codes, and that's okay. It's, it's ascension part codes. of the awareness that takes us there. Yes. So um, ascension is a very valuable topic. And it's one of those areas that's that's highly misinformed. Um, there are ascension pathways available to each of us personally, and we cover that in like the very first recording. I think the very first five minutes actually. So it's 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 bold and strange, but so real that we can cover what ascension is and help you do it in five minutes. And for various reasons in this reality, it's something that people try and study and um, work hard at for like their whole lives, right? So what I think is so refreshing about the time that we're in right now is that we have the level of expertise and mastery that makes things easy, simple, graceful. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. <sighs> okay. So so that's the benefit of stepping into these these pioneering timelines because the stuff that we used to kind of bang around, like, oh, yeah, this is hard, this is hard, this is hard, and then all of a sudden somebody comes along and it's like, no, this is easy. And everybody else is like, oh, okay. <laughs> Why were we making it so hard? And then And then we just all move forward, right? So we all benefit from moving forward in a personal ascension process we all benefit from that. So we cover that right out of the gate. 
And then we start to get into this really fascinating, very esoteric, very coded, um, mysterious area of the afterlife. And I didn't know why we were, we were going into that as human gel. I was like, why are we doing this again? And then as Thoth, the Egyptian, right, he was our ambassador for a lot of, uh, much of the series, talking about the real afterlife. And he actually admitted, John, in the series, where they got it wrong, where in the Egyptian timeline they were they were misinformed. And it was so refreshing. And he was oh, so wow. vulnerable and so honest. Um, and it was, I, I, I don't know if I can explain it, but I just, I feel this warmth in my heart of him kind of pulling back his veil in terms of, of what he thought he knew then, but what he now sees and his love for us to share those, I want to say, secrets with us. Okay? Wow. Yeah, I know. So I'm like, the afterlife, this is not going to be a popular, <laughs> this is not going to be a popular special offer at all. Who wants to talk about that? And he's like, this is oh, cool. no, this, this is cool. This is good. And I'm like, okay. And now that, because I've recorded all of it, um, and it's all available now. So when you purchase, you get all eight recordings right there. Plus, I I put some links to some other supportive information for those that are newer to my work. Um, but so Thoth comes through in a very powerful way about the afterlife and what it really is. And um, I want to say awareness. Uh, and some of it was hard to get through. So I'm treating you like the masters that you are. We don't sugarcoat things, Okay. So it's not as scary as your fear-based energies may be, may be wondering about. But some of it is discouraging, John. It really is. But no more discouraging than what we have to face here in terms of this mm-hmm. world, not rolling out the red carpet for us. So it's refreshing to be treated as a mature master, emotionally balanced, like we can handle the truth now kind of thing, because the lies, they're not getting us anywhere. The mistruths right. and the misinformation about, no, everything's fine. Everything's going to be great. The whole earth is going to ascend. And, I mean, about five years ago, I was like, but it's not, right? And my team was like, no, it's not. You're right. I'm like, then why are there all these people talking about how we're just on the verge of that breakthrough and everybody's going to wake up? And they're like, because they want it to be true, Jill. And I said, but it's, that's not what this place was made for. And they're like nodding their heads like, I know. I'm like, well, who's going to tell them the truth? And of course, they all just look at me. I'm like, yay, I'm going to be really popular telling people the truth about this reality. (laughs) But you know what? I have become popular (laughs) telling people the truth about this reality. Because unless we understand the true fundamentals of what light is eternally and here, we're ill-equipped to live it. And we get confused all the time. So we have an honest, amazing, and I found it inspiring and activating reflection of what the afterlife really is and the insights that it paralleled about the living life we have here were mind-blowing. My mind was bent like a pretzel multiple times, and I love it when that happens because that means my, my consciousness is expanding. So rich, deep, meaningful honest, cosmically yummy insights about what's really going on in the afterlife. It was, it is and was for me so powerful and I feel so strong and sturdy in my love and in my light today and that's what we need to walk into the afterlife with. I'm loving this. I can feel this. I'm excited oh, God, about this. It's so good. It's so good. And Jesus is just like, yes, yes, because he had that fiery, you know, like, I want to say don't F with me <laughs> kind of light <laughs> right? when he was in this world, right? And yes, I mean, he did die, but he lived a very, you know, feisty, fiery, and also he had gentle and loving and very compassionate, forgiving sides too. But he was a fiery rebel, right? And that served him really well in this reality, and it served him beautifully in the afterlife because he blazed trails for light, and I feel like that's what we are doing here in our living journeys and in the afterlife. So also related to the afterlife conversation, we go into depth in the life reviews and the insights there about 
kind of what happens, uh, like what to watch out for, et cetera. I thought at first when I was getting the information, I'm like, but this is only applicable for when we die. And they were like, no, 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 hang on. And then as they as they flipped it and they said, no, wait a minute, you realize that that's exactly parallel to choices that you make in your everyday life now, right? And I was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So they gave examples of situations in the life review where there can be misinformation. There can be withheld information. So they tell us exactly like what to watch out for, what vibrations you're looking for, et cetera. And then I immediately started to see the applicability, the application to the living life right now. And they have this powerful example of situations and groups and communities that we're sitting in. And we may just be sitting there going, but wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Is this, mm-hmm. is this true? Is this right? And some of us are more passive. We sit there because it's too uncomfortable to stand up and say, I don't think I agree with this anymore. I don't think I can support this anymore. This might be bullshit. Right. If we don't have the power to do that in our human life, we're not going to have the power to do it in the afterlife. Am I being too bold, John? <laughs> you'll, you'll tell no, me no. if you're like, oh, you're scaring everybody away. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm waiting for so the good. book to come out also. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. this is amazing. So I'm loving this. Oh, my God. I love it. So uh, then also... But Jill, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. of course it makes sense. It's, it's all a fractal of the hologram. And so, of course, yes. if, it's, if it's happening here, it's happening there. It's all part of yes. the experience. As above, so below. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. I didn't even think about that application, but it's so real and the kind of tricked me into getting there in a fun way um but the the powerful insights the relevance oh my gosh that it really does set your light the light of god that we are it sets it up in a structure that's real and enduring not just for our living life for the afterlife and for the full reunion that we can experience with our higher self energy john not when we're waiting to die right now so we, wow. there's, there, I know, it's just, I was just blown away. I'm still blown away. <laughs> the other uh, fun thing that happened throughout it is that there were very natural false teachings that would come up that they just very beautifully and gracefully like, oh yeah, and by the way, and they would just like reset it. Like, this is the false teaching, here's the, here's the truth. And it's just like, it's like a breath of fresh air. Because what I find a lot of times with some of these these mistruths is that most people actually sensed it, like we were talking about before, on some level, they were like, on some deep level, it's like, I'll play this game, but something feels off about this, and I don't know what it is. And then when we hear the truth, we're like, that's it, that's what I was looking for, that's the one. So that happens all over in this. And it feels so good to have somebody name something that doesn't make sense and then add something that does make sense, which is the true divine truth about things. It's really powerful. Yeah, so as you can imagine, throughout my work, I've had to get really comfortable with the idea that I disagree with so-called experts all the time. And Jesus, Van Gogh, Galileo, Da Vinci, they're always reassuring me, yep, so did we. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're, in, we're all in good company when we disagree with the experts, right? I'm not here to agree with the standard teachings. I'm here to help us see where those teachings are not getting us where we deserve to be. Or they can be augmented, and any truth has an expanding truth. Yes. Um, and more awareness that it wants to bring yeah, forward. There yeah. we go. Yeah. At a time, it may have been a huge upgrade, right? I, I right. remember in my own journey of, oh, I, oh, it felt so good to be like, oh, I'm a star seed. That's so cool. And then my team was like, you know, you're still in the time-space continuum if you think you're from a star, right? And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. And they're like, there's nothing wrong with it, but when you're ready for an upgrade, we've got one ready for you. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway. I love there's it. Just Limitless growth here. So the series is eight parts. Um, There's a lot of humor. There's a lot of love. There's timeless wisdom that feels like somebody removing like a heavy, um, like cloak. It just you feel free. You feel 
uh, I want to say reborn in the light of God that you are, but that feels like such a cliche. But Jesus is nodding. He's like, no, that's exactly what it is, because it washes you clean of the fears of the afterlife, which some of us have on a genetic level that we didn't even realize. So these fears of the unknown and, well, what about this and what about that, it, it, it just illuminates all of it so that we can be clearer and more present in our full range of divinity right now. And I love how I, as human Jill, didn't know how we were going to get there. And I love how divinely orchestrated it clearly was. Because, yeah, it's just, it's a wonderful series. It's very unique. It's very special. For those that aren't used to my work, I... I'm so excited for you to try it out because I can't tell you how many times I hear from people, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been on my spiritual journey for decades, and this is it. This is it. What you're doing right here sets me free, gives me courage. I see all the time on Facebook people, you know, okay, I started this service, or I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm right there to say, oh, my God, you're doing it. And they're like, Jill, your session helped me get there. And I just have goosebumps that there was something I helped them see in themselves that was always there that gave them the courage they needed to take that next step. Mm. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So we get the eight recordings in the Ascension Cone recordings, and then you're also mm-hmm. offering a live Q&A. Yeah, thank you. That's a bonus. Yeah. So I, I like the dialogue with the audience that participates in it and the great questions that they come up with, et cetera. So we're hosting a live call on November 11th. Um, I think it's like 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time on November 11th, and that will be recorded. And all the materials, the way that I do it, once you buy it, you've got access to it forever. I'm never going to be like, okay, you're out of here now. Because there's, it's, it's so multidimensional and so multi-layered. You could come back to this three times. You'll hear three different things. It's it's crazy coded, <laughs> like in a really cool way. So the Q and A call will be recorded. I'm looking forward to that experience. And then I started last time I was on with you offering the private session package, and I definitely wanted to do that again because there's there's nothing like a private session package where you get to hear from your te- your team in this way, where your mastery is obvious, and we need more of that in this reality, more experiences where your mastery is so present and so clear, and you get to hear it from someone other than yourself. You get to hear it straight from your team, ask questions, etc. So that's a important thing. That's a part of it. And the messages from the teams are amazing. Mm. Um, I had one recently in, in LA with Jill, and again, the message is it, it was just you know mm. getting goosebumps um, all over the chills with the the layers of truth that were coming in, and and how mm. they were just pointing to things that were um, ready to ignite. If only I had a little more awareness or confidence around it, and it's only provided that in so many different ways. So. It's, it's a phenomenal package. So, guys, if you buy the 30-minute private session, you also get the Ascension Code. So you get both package A and mm-hmm. B uh, when you book your private session. That's $187 for both. Um, or if you just want the Ascension Codes and you want to start off with that, that's available for $127. And on BTO, we offer two payment options on both packages as well, and a 30-day money-back guarantee on the recorded packages. So um, it's a great opportunity to continue working with Jill if you've already opened up that experience, and if mm. you have, you know how amazing it can be. Um, and if you're new to Jill's work, I, I I can't recommend Jill and her work enough and what she brings through and the awareness and the, even the spark of creativity of thinking a little bit differently. Mm. So a little bit differently. And what that mm-hmm. ignites in you and seeing a little bit of a different perspective can open up just a geyser of wisdom within mm-hmm. you that knew something wasn't quite right, but you weren't hearing it in a way that made sense. You weren't quite tapping into the possibility that what you're hearing maybe wasn't right or because mm-hmm. everybody else was on board. Um Again, there's just so many different ways that this provides um, awareness, openings um, for evolution, and it's it's fantastic. I highly recommend it. 
and hope that you guys take advantage of it because I, again, what I do here is curate amazing um, awareness for all you guys through all these fantastic teachers and, and Jill's work I cannot recommend enough. Um, so, again, to get to the special offer, just click on the special offer button on the webcast page or go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Jill 14. Jill in the number 14. Jill, why Ascension Codes? Why did that come up so strongly? And I know you explained it in the package, but mm-hmm. what else? But there's something else in there, in the energy of that, that wants to be spoken about. What's coming up? Mm. So similar to what we were talking about earlier about those books needing to be flipped, that they're not stacked on top of each other, they're sitting right next to each other, this group is coded for Ascension. We are coded to make it easier for the light of God, the light of source, to be present within our consciousness. We're wired for it. So by some of these outdated approaches of, well, first you've got to clear, and then you've got to work on that problem in your life, and you've got to fix this part of your personality because no one likes that part of you, right? There's all these really linear ways that we do it similar to the broken Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In other words, first you need to get perfect, right? And that's not true because you're already the light of source and the all that is, You're not not that while you're here. But this reality and this human experience is perfect at making us forget and feel Mm. disconnected from the light of source that we are. So a group like this, we already have the codes. And truthfully, all life has the codes. But we have the codes that restore the codes (laughs) within all life. And it is... It's like we're built for it, is what I want to say. And some of us feel this hunger. It's like we don't know what we're hungry for, but it's just like, it's like an itch that we can't scratch in a way. And what I find is that when we start to access these, these deep, cosmic, timeless truths, it feels like, oh, that's it. Oh my gosh, that, that's, that's what I was looking for. I didn't even know what I was looking for, but that's what I was looking for. So it's re- it's like a relief. It's like it brings sanity <laughs> to a chaotic world. It helps us right. make sense of this place so that we can relax, so that we can trust ourselves, so that we can stop trying to feed knowledge into our brain and we can relax into understanding. We don't have to we don't have to know everything. So the Ascension Codes, the reason we called it that is because we're building tracks. We're building tracks between this reality and, if you will, the afterlife, the in-between states, right? And, by the way, in the series they came up with a name, a beautiful name. I don't want to give it away because it's just so fun. It's just so perfect. Um, (laughs) A name for the consciousness that you are between this reality and, the, if you will, the full self. Um, the all that is reality. They came up with a name for that in-between state of consciousness. It's just so brilliant. Um, and it really, it's just like, it, it just, every, it's like the world falls into place. So with those, you, I don't want to give too much away, John. It's so fun though. But it's, let's just put it this way. It's a big confidence builder. Not just for what happens in the afterlife, but who you are in this life. Mm. And that Amazing. authority that you were talking about, that we're, we're constantly, it's like this reality has, has I want to say programmed us, but we're not robots, but it's definitely, we've been trained to not trust ourselves. And I did finally find that article um, that I was looking for that I wrote a few years ago that's about this. So I'll post this in the in the Ascension Code thing so that it's there. But it it just validates what you're saying. And it really, I love the way the, the worded messages, the verbal messages and the written messages come through my team. The way it's written, it's just like, yes, that's so true. Because we've been, when we were, when we were children living at home, we were taught that our parents were the authority. And then, it, and also teachers were the authority. And then we have the police as the authority. And then the priests and the religious teachers were the authority. And then the political leaders were the authority. So it, it's like at no point did anyone say, oh, by the way, now you're the authority. <laughs> so it's not handed to us in this world. So at some point, it's important, or at least it's valuable, 
if we claim our divine authority. So the the brain and a lot of the human layers have been in a habit of looking for an outside authority. And it, it takes some reconfiguring, which we are all capable of doing, to notice where we are looking for an outside validation so that we can give it to ourselves from that inner divine authority of, if you will, our higher self layers, our source layers, our our soul signature vibrations, whatever you want to call it, so that we can, I want to say comfort that part of us that's like, do I have authority to do this? Who do I think I am? I I think you need a license to do this, right? There should be some regulating authority of this, right? Don't I need permission? So those parts of us, they need comfort. They need reassurance. And to be able to give that to ourselves, that creates a pioneer. Wow. And that's actually amazing. And that actually takes me into, you know, if we really look at the afterlife. You know, mm. I, I've always heard that, you know, the, one of the biggest regrets is that we didn't love enough others. Mm. But, but I think mm. I think the biggest one has to be that we didn't love ourselves enough. Yes. As Amen. much as we could have. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's it. And. And no, it's so funny because now my team is saying that's part of it. But what would you do when you love yourself? That's what they actually get more excited about. Yeah, totally. (laughs) The act of loving yourself is a beautiful thing. Um, But again, the linear mind, it wants to put it in a Maslow's a hierarchy of needs kind of thing. Like, well, I'll love myself when, you know, I stop acting like a jerk or I start to get my finances in order or I, you know, I'm successful in the romance department. We put all these conditions on when we'll love ourselves. And we right. we know at a deeper level of ourselves that that's totally against how we know Source Creator God, which is the uh, literally the epitome of unconditional love. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just it's funny in a strange paradox that there's all these contradictions that the, we walk around with every day and we don't even realize it. It's like, yeah, that's right. I'm doing conditional love to myself. I'm more forgiving and graceful with other people than I am with myself. What the what's the deal? But the thing is, masters set high standards. So we wouldn't expect someone else to live up to our standards but we tend to have high standards for ourselves. And that's fine as long as you're not withholding love until you meet those standards. Because oh. you won't meet those, or let's, let's just say, you're less likely to meet those standards without the love of source to fuel you and feed you and comfort you and nurture you. Well, there'll be mental constructs, and those are mm-hmm. those are never... Those are never stable. That you right. just can't. Um, they're they're unachievable. Yeah. Yeah, they're unachievable. So rather wow. than waiting for you to get perfect, which was never required, right? Jesus was like, just ask me. <laughs> I had a temper. <laughs> you guys don't talk about it, but I had a fiery temper that no one wants to talk about, <laughs> right? And to me, that wasn't something to solve. It was some. It was another avenue of my love. Mm. Yeah. Mm, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is amazing, guys. Setting a, lot of, yeah. setting a lot of good stuff free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew this was going to be a great call, guys, and that's why I wanted to do a Monday call instead of a Tuesday. So we're actually going to run this call again tomorrow um, because there's so much to be had here. Every time we get on the phone with Jill, it's the, the energy just like, it, you just, again, the floodgates open and it wants to go, go, go. And there's so much here um, that I wanted my wish was to have the opportunity to absorb, let the brain rest in it, the mind, the energetic field, kind of be fed with the energy and then come back and listen. So tomorrow, we're doing the encore of Jill of tonight's call. Um, so again, it can feed that oasis that you are even more as you just relax into it and just get to be in it organically. Um, because, again, there's so much wisdom and expansion to be had here um, that I hope that you guys come back and listen again tomorrow. And, of course, take advantage of the special offer. Um, The Ascension Code package is freaking awesome. I can't wait Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. to listen to myself. I can feel what's coming up in there. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm excited. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Um, 
someone of, Joe, someone was asking if they purchased both packages uh, with the private session, can they gift the private session to someone else? Ah, okay, wait, let me, I just want to make sure it's clear. So package A and package B both have the Ascension codes. Package B has the addition of the private session. Okay, exactly. so I'm just going to give an honest answer um, because <laughs> why do anything else, right? I find that giving someone else a private session doesn't work as well. Um, it's happened enough times now where somebody, I don't do gift certificates, for example, for private sessions. I will if it's like, because a lot of people do private sessions for themselves for their birthday. So like a loved one will say she really loves your work or he really loves your work and he wants a private session from you on your birthday. So is that okay if I buy a, buy a session for them? Yes. But if it's what happens most of the time, though, is somebody saying, I know somebody who, quote, unquote, needs a session with you. Okay. But the challenge is they don't know they need a session with me. <laughs> so they hear about 10% of what I say. And I find it, and I'm being selfish here, I find it dissatisfying because I'm trying to give them, and it makes me want to cry, I'm trying to hand them back their sovereignty and they don't understand what we're doing. I'm trying to guide them back into a personal union with their higher self by helping them see themselves literally through the vibration of God. So most people don't expect that in a reading because that's not how most readings are done. Most readings right. are, uh, you ask a question and then I'll answer it. And the reason we don't do that is because what we offer isn't what you'd ask. <laughs> so, so so if you I can ask, you like, already have the solution. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we'll still answer your questions, but that's going to be the last two thirds of our time together. And then the first, the first third of our time together, I give your team what they want to talk about. And what oftentimes happens is somebody says, "That's so funny," because now that I'm getting to my questions, you answered all of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it's just from such an expanded viewpoint. So I'm not, I'm not. I know I can help people, but it is kind of like when somebody says, well, I'm hungry, and you bring them like the most amazing meal from the most amazing place in town, and they're like, well, McDonald's would have worked. And you're like, well, why did I go to all that effort then? Mm -hmm. So I know that sounds maybe a little off to people, but that's true. So I would rather that if somebody, quote, unquote, needs a session with me, that they decide for themselves that they want a session with me. That's nice. What if they're gifting it to someone who's really familiar with your work and wants it? Then that's a different mm. story, right? That does feel like a different story because they know enough about about you know me and kind of like, oh yeah, okay, so I, that's not going to be your everyday reading here, right? Right. Because um, exactly. there are, there are people that get a lot of readings, and I love to do readings with them because they're like, okay, this is unlike anything I've ever had before. <laughs> right. It's like speechless, right? Um, so that part is such a pleasure to really, really hand them these truths from their team that, I mean, everybody deserves to hear. Um, so that part would be fine, yes. And then the other kind of layer of it I'd offer is that some people feel like, well, I already got a session from them. And, John, you know me because you've had more than one session with me. There's always something new that your team has to share, yes? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> Always. Oh, Always. Yeah. So, so even for, I mean, I have clients that, you know, buy packages and they meet with me eight times a year or something like that. And there's, I'm always surprised that there's always something new, always something fresh, always something relevant and deeply inspiring and, and tactically helpful. Um, so, yeah, it's never the same thing. That was All a right. long awesome. answer to a simple question, but. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it, it, it makes sense. <laughs> And, get, and again, guys, a special offer is up there for you guys. Uh, again, to get to the page, uh, just click on the special offer button or go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Jill14. We're running the encore tomorrow again because, I, again, I want you guys to, to sleep in this. Uh, sleep on it. Allow the integration to come mm -hmm. in um, just through the awarenesses of your own truth. Um, and then come back and then let's add another layer to it. So that will be fun. Um, and Jill, before we let everybody go tonight, it's what are you excited about? What's exciting you right now? I don't know if I can pick one thing. That's so funny. I I will never get bored by the human potential. I am always so excited about 
the fact that there's always these these gold mines. We're just filled with never ending just supplies of amazingness, diamond mines, gold mines, you know, whatever you want to platinum mines, whatever you want to think of it as. But we're like a wellspring of endless creativity, ingenuity, love, uh, brilliance. I mean, so I don't expect the whole world to do that. I've already said that. But for those that that want to be like a super amazing version of themselves, I will be there all day long for you because I I – I get how to kind of tap into that more fully. I love to help people trust that more. And I know from my own experience, from me as Jill, what a totally, I mean, I'm just, I'm, there's, those layers of Jill are still in there. The business geek, the, you know, puzzle nerd, the math nerd, you know, just, just kind of dorky in a lot of ways. Um, and silly and goofy and I love to laugh and have fun and be unconventional. But these cosmic layers of me, oh my gosh, I, we have so many reasons to feel like the rock stars that we are. And some of us have layers of holding ourselves back because it feels unnatural to feel that good. And we're worried that we're going to be called arrogant. But arrogance is a, arrogance is a statement of I'm amazing and you're not. And that's not what I am at all. I know I'm an amazing version of myself and I know that there's even more and I know every other single human has their own version of that and I light up about those possibilities. I love it. Oh, how exciting. And your enthusiasm is contagious and it, again, it, <laughs> it inspires and gives us confidence as well because it's, it's like I can feel it in your field and it translates. Mm. It's like it opens <laughs> up something within me that says, you know what? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And how fun is yeah. that, right? Oh. It's so fun. It's so fun. Yeah, so I get it. The world is imperfect. I'm not asking it to be perfect. We don't need it to be perfect. We wired ourselves in ways to be independently pioneering, evolutionary, groundbreaking, cutting the mold, making new molds, etc., we don't need the conditions to be ideal for us to shine our light. We just don't. Mm-hmm. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. Mm. Uh, amazing call, Joel. Thank you so much. Um, oh, thank you. But, it's always an honor. It's such a privilege, Sean. I really love being here, and it's. I have so much fun hanging out with you, and I have so much fun interacting with the with the folks that show up for these these cool these cool special offers and private sessions and so forth. So it's it's really an honor. I feel so blessed. As do we to have you on here and get to collaborate with you in this as well. And again, thank you so much for the information that you got for mm-hmm. the special offer, the Ascension Codes. I, I, again, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> again, I can't wait to dive in. I think I'm going to listen to them on the plane next week. Um, there you go. Oh, it's great. Me, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's good. So, so uh, again, I hope you guys participate with me in the special offer. I'm diving in. It's right there by clicking on the special offer button. And with that, guys, oh, and, of course, a private session with Jill was part of Package B. I want to remind everyone of that. Mm-hmm. Take advantage of it. And with that, guys, we're doing an encore tomorrow night. Um, so you'll be hearing us in double, if you will. Um, but it's so worth it. And I look forward to seeing you on the call again tomorrow as we replay this call. And with that, it's, I'm sending you a huge hug, all my love, and look forward to seeing you on the next call. Have a great night. <laughs>